I have the pleasure today sitting down with Terrier hockey legend and Olympic gold medalist Mike Ruzioni. Mike, thanks a lot for coming to Terrier thanks. Nation. Thank, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So in your four years at BU, you scored over 20 goals each season. You have a bean pot title under your belt, four frozen four appearances. What was your biggest memory at BU? Believe it or not, not winning uh, one of the frozen fours. You know, you go to four final fours and, uh, and, and you don't win one. I mean, that's, people always ask me about my whole hockey career. And I, you know, gold medal is great and winning bean pots and hockey East championships and, and, you know, Christmas tournaments. But the one regret was not, uh, not winning a national championship. Something that stays with me, kind of bugs me. They won it before I got there and they won it after I got there. But, um, you know, I still had uh, some great memories here. And probably the good memories of the, just the guys you played with, you know, the camaraderie, the friendships, uh, four years of, uh, of playing competitive uh, hockey at a, at, a, at a high level and a successful level. So that, that's really something to, to look back and remember. Absolutely. So before the 1980 Olympics, uh, BU and Minnesota had one of the best rivalries in hockey. Yeah. So what was your impression of Coach Brooks before the team? Well, I thought he was nuts. And uh, throughout the year, I thought he was nuts. <laughs> but a great coach, a great motivator. Um, knew the game so well. Uh, you could see he, he just wore his heart on his sleeve. Um, when he was a, a coach at the University of Minnesota, there was nothing bigger than Minnesota hockey to him. He grew up there. Uh, and then when he, when he was the coach of the Olympic team, there was no greater honor for him than to represent his country and coach his country. So the guy had a great passion to coach and teach. And I always tell the story, you know, we had the bench clearing brawl with them um, in 1976 in the, at the Final Four in Denver. And we always accused the Minnesota of starting that fight. They always accused us. And I told Herb, after playing under him, I'm convinced he started the fight in Denver. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way he coached. That's awesome. So uh, Coach Brooks' motivation style is talked about all the time. I mean, even here in the School of Management, they talk about his leadership. We do case studies on how you can apply it to business settings. What's something that you walk away with that he taught you? Well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Herb taught me a lot, but, but so did Jack Parker. And I think Jack and Herb were very similar. Um, forget the passion to coach and teach. I mean, that's, that's something that's very special in a coach, but they were both very honest, uh, and I think honesty is a very important quality to have, and, and brutally honest to the point. Um, but they, they both taught me that, about, about being honest. They both taught me a lot about hard work and how hard you have to work to accomplish your goals. Uh, they both taught me a lot about the commitment that you have to make to be the best, to be successful. And, you know, Herb was able to showcase it on a bigger stage because of the Olympic Games where... I think what Coach Parker for 30 years, uh, or many years he's been here, displays that same quality, that same integrity, and that same commitment. And those were the values that I think Herb and Jack had and, and the qualities that I think they were able to instill in me as a player. Absolutely. So take me back almost 30 years ago now, night before the game against the Soviets. What's going through your head? Uh, actually, I was at a, a little campsite with my father and my high school football coach and my cousin. And, we were having a little barbecue and having a couple of beers and just kind of relaxing and just thinking about the game the next day. I mean, not, it was nothing intense, nothing magical. It was, to me, a very important hockey game, uh, but no different than other big hockey games. And just, you know, wanted to be relaxed. And I didn't want to do anything different because it was the Soviets. You know, you prepare for games, uh, you know, in the, in the same way, regardless of what the game is. And I didn't want to just all of a sudden, you know, go back to my... Uh, the village and sit in my room and wo worry about the game. I wanted to be natural of what I normally would do the night before a game, which was spend time with my family and relax and make sure I didn't miss curfew and, you know, get in in time and get ready to play the next day. So final question here, 2009 Terriers, number one team in the country. Pick your favorite team at BU. How do you guys fare? Well, I'll have to go with what Jack Parker says. You're not a great team unless you win a national championship. So I guess my four years here, we fell a little short. Uh, we, off, we were awfully good uh, my junior year. We were very, very good, but uh, weren't, weren't able to, to pull the trigger and win the whole thing. So uh, I'll have to bow down, as Jack says, to the teams that won national titles. And let's hope this year's team um, ranks up there with one of the great ones, or they'll just go down uh, as one of the good ones. Well, that would be a great matchup to, uh, to watch if we could. Thanks a lot for coming in studio. Pl had a pleasure sitting down nice, and talking to you. Thank you. you that today. was great. Thank you very much.